quit quietly the right way. Hey, it's Marty Pants. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to be good at your job without letting your job take over your life. Quiet quitting without sacrificing getting promotions or raises or moving up the ladder in your career. Honestly, I wish I could send this to 25 year old me. It would have helped me tremendously to focus my efforts so that I could get my dream job and bigger paychecks much faster. You may have heard of the phenomenon called quiet quitting, which is basically just redrawing your work-life boundaries so that your job isn't taking advantage of you. Quiet quitting by itself, doing the bare minimum, will most likely lead you to getting the bare minimum out of your career, both in satisfaction and pay. And I doubt you want that. I mean, if you do, cool, but then this isn't the video for you, so I don't know, click on one of the many other videos that I'm sure YouTube is recommending. My name is Kate Moody, financial educator and coach here to help independent women outsmart their money. If it sounds like that could help you, be sure to subscribe. Now I want you to stick around until the end because I'm actually including a bonus tip that is so easy to implement at your work, which will make you seem like a superstar to your boss, or at least, you know, make you seem much better, like you're super on top of your work, even when maybe you're not feeling like it. You may or may not know that I was a librarian for many years and had 28 yearly workers I supervised. Having so many people work under me taught me a lot about how to be a better worker or at least how to look like a better worker to your boss. As a former supervisor, I could group my workers into three categories. Those who did the bare minimum not to get fired, they usually got fired. Those who did their job well, and nothing more, they were fine. And those who I could depend on to keep the library running really well. You wanna be in that last category. You wanna be dependable. You wanna bring good ideas to your supervisor. You want your supervisor to see you as someone who furthers the goals of the institution, not just someone who completes tasks that are assigned to them. The type of work that these types of workers do is I had sent out a document to everyone and it kind of looked a little wonky, like the formatting need some, needed some help, but I wasn't gonna waste my time with formatting the document. And I had one of my workers come up to me and say, hey, can I format that document for you? And I was like, sure, go ahead, have a crack at it. Took her 10 minutes, she sent it back to me. It looked great. She took the initiative, she made something better, she made my job easier. That is huge for a boss. So the people in this last category are far more likely to get raises and promotions because they not only do what's asked of them, they're actually making the organization as a whole run more smoothly. And let's not downplay the importance of making your boss's life easier. Hey guys, this is good stuff. If it's useful to you, boop that little like button so that other people can find it. Here are my three tips on quiet quitting while still remaining this category of worker. So keeping a strong work-life balance. First and foremost, set time boundaries. Make sure that your coworkers and your employer know that you will work your butt off during work hours. But when you're not at work, you're not gonna be checking your email messages, you're not gonna be checking Slack. If you want, you can check them, but if you reply, just know that you are training your coworkers and your employer to expect you to get back to them outside of work hours. And of course, like this is gonna depend on your position. If you're an IT person and the system goes down at 11 o'clock at night, that's an emergency. You're now working at 11 o'clock at night. So, you know, that one may not apply to everybody. Number two. Use your time and energy to pave the way for a job you love, even if it's for someone other than your employer. Bonus points if you can get your current employer to pay for it. You could be quiet quitting your job while looking awesome for a different employer or position. See if your current position will pay for you to take classes or attend conferences or pay membership fees in professional organizations where you will learn skills for your dream job and or network with people who can help you get to your dream job. If you like your job, but maybe not your employer, don't do extra work for your employer that isn't a resume builder. Join professional groups and use your time and energy to get active with them instead. So depending on your employer, you can probably use your time at work to do the work for these groups. Join committees, get to know people, expand that LinkedIn network, prove that you're a good worker outside of your employer. Then when positions open up with other companies, they may contact you apl to apply because they already know you, you're a known quantity. Or maybe a position opens up somewhere and you don't personally know anybody there, 
but you have an acquaintance in common who can vouch for you who you met through a professional organization. So this is something that I've just learned through working for many years. If you want to be successful, you're going to have to throw a lot at the wall and not all of it is going to stick. Frankly, most of it won't stick, but the more you keep throwing, the more will stick. To put it a better way, it's just like the harder you work, the luckier you will get, the more doors that will open for you. Click the link in my description to get 24 easy money moves checklist that gives you easy ideas for saving more, spending less, and reducing financial anxiety. Third, take the initiative to do extra work when it benefits you. The hard truth is if you wanna get a raise, you have to do more than what's on the job description because by definition, you're doing exactly what they're paying you for. You're in that second category of worker that I talked about, the people who do everything that's asked of them and not a drop more. You're good enough not to fire, but you're not so good that they're gonna give you a raise. If you wanna make a case that you should be paid more, then you need to prove to your boss you're worth more to the company. You need to justify that extra expense to them. Okay, but how can you be quiet quitting while taking on extra responsibilities? Isn't that sort of like back ass words? Mm. Good question. I recommend that you take the initiative here. Don't wait to be assigned work that you don't want to do. Look for work you'd prefer to be doing and ask to do it as long as it doesn't hamper your ability to get your regular work done. Pick up that work so later on you can go to your boss and say, hey, I think there should be a role that does X, Y, and Z. And you know who has two thumbs and experience with X, Y, and Z? This gal. Bonus points if you do the thumbs. If your boss doesn't think you should be in that role, well, fine. Go find another employer that is hiring for that role and apply because having experience already doing that work will give you a huge leg up on your competition. I want you guys to watch out little extra jobs that are often put on women and people of color, like taking notes during a meeting, organizing work events, keeping track of employee birthdays. Those aren't resume builders and you want to use your time wisely, making sure that you're really focusing on the stuff that does make you look good to other employers and for that annual review. That said, you do wanna be a team player. So pick up those tasks now and again. What you don't wanna be is a doormat. You don't want people to expect you to pick up all these extra little tasks when they pop up. You'll need to figure out what that balance looks like for you. So here's my super duper easy bonus tip on quiet quitting most people never even consider if your boss asks you to do something and your answer is gonna be yes, say it like you're excited to do the job. Say it with a smile on your face. Be happy about it, whatever. Even if you're not excited or happy about it. Because the thing is, either way, you have to do that work now. When you agree happily, you look like you have everything under control. You look like a great worker. When you agree with a huff or like a, oh, one more thing to do, it looks to your boss like you're frazzled and you don't have your work under control. If you're gonna agree, do it happily. And I mean, this is just speaking from my personal experience. Maybe your boss doesn't care, but you know, if you think about it, I think you would come to the same conclusion, right? Plus, Nobody likes assigning work that other people don't want to do. Like, that just feels bad. Ultimately, if you're quiet quitting, never lose sight of who gets raises and promotions. Reliable people who take the initiative and do a great job. You can be that person while still having strong work-life balance and not being taken advantage of. Hey, what would you add to this list of quiet quitting the smart way? Share it with the rest of us by popping it in the comments. Or, you know, just... Tell me how much you like this video, because I love getting those comments too. Hope this helps. Cheers, guys. Mm -hmm.